Howdy folks, Doc here with LastPass Tool, and I'm going to do a first impressions video of the, the new Channel Lock Speed Grip pliers. Um, I picked up a set of the 10 inch and the 8 inch um, right here. The 8 inch is the 428X is the brand or is the model number, and the 10 inch is the 430X little bit longer. I kind of wanted the 12 and the 8, but they didn't sell that in the set. And it turns out the more I play with it, um, I don't know if I want the larger one. I don't know if I need it. You know, I've got some larger channel locks and they have other features that, you know, or other uses that come in handy. But I wanted to take a look at these directly, see what their benefits are and how they compare or where they fit into the line of kind of traditional, um, you know, traditional channel lock pliers. Uh, you know, other brands of, of these tongue and groove pliers. Uh, obviously, the Knipex Cobra, the Knipex, Knipex Plier Wrench, and then, um, well, another brand of, of uh, kind of the tongue and groove. So let's take a close look at one of these. First of all, what we've got is a push button mechanism that basically has a receding. Um, I mean, when you push it, it, re it, it disconnects from these slots. So it's a fairly solid, straightforward mechanism. It doesn't have that arc design um, that you see with the traditional tongue and grooves. This one's straight, which allows you to quickly move it back and forth within this channel and then lock it where you want it. So if you had, a, say, a bolt or a fastener um, that you could just go right up to, grab it and then you're there. Um, grabbed it from the edge. So that's actually pretty fast. However, it is a two-handed operation. One of the first things I noticed grabbing this is uh, this button has a very small amount of movement if you're used to this Knipex uh, button, which moves quite a bit and has a big spring-loaded thing on the end. It's probably overkill. Um, you know, if this thing holds up. Uh, I was kind of surprised at how hefty it felt. In fact, I was a little bit shocked. I thought, man, this, is this heavy? It seems really robotic, really robust, almost art design over um, kind of traditional, you know, plier minimalism, maybe. So I wanted to weigh it and find out where it fit in all of this. Let me grab the scale here. So what I've got is... Uh, this thing's set on ounces. Let's take a look. And um, we'll start out, let's see, I'll do the 10. That'll be the closest here. So here's the 10 inch. And I set it on the scale and I'm getting about 15.3 ounces. So that's my benchmark here for these guys. The classic 250, the 8701-250 Knipex Cobra comes in at around 11.9. So it's a little bit lighter, noticeably lighter. However, if I put the Knipex plier wrench, this is the 8603 also in a 250 length on here, this is gonna come in at over 16 ounces. So it is heavier than this. Um, and then if I do another brand, let's say this snap on here, the, what is this, 91 ACP, this is gonna come in in between at around 13.3. So for the feature set in this, um, particular channel lock wrench or channel lock plier wrench thing, <laughs> speed grip, what do they call it? Tongue and groove plier. It's, I, I don't know. I guess maybe that's a thing, the tongue and groove, even if it's not curved. But anyway, that's where, where this fits in. So that's right in the ballpark. It does have an, a unique, this is not a dipped um, handle. This is actually molded on here and you can see the, the seam lines. Um, versus a dip, which is literally a dip, where they, you know, dip it down into a set or a, into a tank full of this vinyl. And you can see they're known as dip handles um, because they literally are. And then here's the drip tip at the end. Some of them are pretty dramatic right, right there. Um, others like this, you know, even Craftsman, look at that big old drip mark right at the end. So that's new. They are doing something different with the handle, which allows them then to not just have the smooth uh, vinyl on here, but to literally texture it. And I kind of like that. Um, however, it is quite angular. Um, looking at, at the step down here, 
in the handle. I'm guessing there's a lot of meat in this, this uh, rubberized material here. So what I'm guessing um, is that they have options on how to make this. And this I felt when I started pulling on some pretty hard um, fasteners just as a test, um, it's definitely got a bite to it. It has corners. Um, even just a little bit of roundness. The snap-on I really like. That that even though I, I don't really care for these pliers too much, that's that's a nice rounded feel. So it does does work well in the hand. The Knipex is a little lower profile, but still rounded. You can see the roundness there, whereas the, the channel lock is quite angular. And the the, the angles you feel. Um, it has an interesting set here of uh, um, kind of the, the the limits and if I squish it it actually gets kind of stuck in fact the, the 10 is a little more like what I'm talking about if I squish it in it sticks so there is is a compression and you can see it probably right up here I hope that's not spreading the mechanism but it literally squishes down and sticks um, now look at that. Did you see the button? Uh, it's kind of a take on the flag, I guess. Four stars and a few stripes. Um, I thought at first it was just bad machining <laughs> from a distance. When I looked at it, it wasn't as bright as this. And I thought that's kind of weird. Um, again, very low profile button. It slides down. If we count up these guys, what I've done is I put a mark right here. So look at this. You guys suggested this. So I got one to play with right there. Um, anyway, we're gonna use it to count. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is this marked one. So then I'm gonna slide this up. Pick up where I left off, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 notches. So I've got 18. Now, if you go to something big, even like this one, this tongue and groove, and you literally count those out um, of the potential size locks, um, if I go in here, what do I have? I have one. Let's see if you can see those right here. Grab my cool new punch here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So less than half. Um, of the choices. Now why that's important is the design of these uses parallel jaws. So the more parallel that you can move into the fastener, the better off you, get, you are. Um, if you look at this, if I grab it, let's say I'll go a little too big here. Um, I can't get a good solid grip if I don't have these jaws parallel. The Knipex, of course, in the, in the uh, Cobra, solve that by running these kind of trapezoidal jaws, which gives you a considerably a larger array of grabbing potential here. So you can be off by more as long as you can close the pliers. Um, you can literally, even in their smallest setting, still get a decent grip. Um, whereas anything that's parallel, once it goes off parallel, you have a harder time hanging on to it because you have gaps that, that form on the edges. So the plier wrench comes in here because it was designed literally to grab parallel using that camming mechanism. It never, you can't get the, the jaws out of parallel. So what you can do is adjust maybe the, uh, the handle thickness. Whereas these, obviously you can adjust those angles, which is fairly common and traditional with the channel or with the uh, tongue and groove. So it maintains that inefficiency, if you will, but um, has a faster movement here. Nice, great big old button. Faster movement where you possibly could could grab something parallel. Um, although I do like the Baco because I can slide these up. They're much faster and I had kind of hoped, look at that grab right there, pretty amazing. I'd kind of hoped that these had that ability where you could maybe go to the wide selection 
and then just slide them up and you can't they lock in so you can't really just slide them up and grab and that to me is important when you're trying to go um, to a particular setting in fact if you look at this it grabs up here at the tip but it doesn't grab down here that's one of the problems with uh, kind of these parallel jaws that don't remain parallel it's the same thing you run into here um, and the reason that we might not want a whole lot of settings here, um, in fact, this snap-on has one, two, three, four, five, you know, so it's only two more than the slip joint, the triple slip joint. But anyway, what happens is as we try to grab stuff, we want to be able to adjust quickly. These take a larger motion. You know, we have to swing that disengagement of the, of the tongue into the groove. Um, but... What's the advantage of these? I don't know. Um, they, I do like the feel um, or the way they grab. They have a reaming capability. I guess that's maybe it there if you stick that in. I'm not sure. But they actually have a, you know, this sliding fine tooth mechanism here, but it doesn't necessarily slide very quick. Uh, once you've got it set, pretty good and you can get nice parallel jaws so it's like they solved one problem um, of allowing uh, kind of a finer mechanism with their their slip joint or with excuse me with their tongue and groove but they've introduced another now that they've got a more complex mechanism that doesn't allow a real fast set um, and if you're off most people will just continue to use it if they're close enough and not try to dial in that last set or that last click where they can get the perfect parallel if that's even possible. So Knipex here, you know, allows you to grab it, you know, within a few clicks based on base the, the handle thickness, you know, or if you really need to grab it at any particular roundness there. But um, just a different take on the tool. They're very beefy. You can see that. If you, in fact, compare those to the channel locks, you can see it's a whole different ball game as far as, as the amount of material in contact laterally with the fastener. Um, and it, it, to me, it's, it's more um, something where you would want to be able to have you know, a good bite, good up-close contact with it. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting. You know, it's a it's a USA made tool. Channel Lock's pushing some new directions. Um, I just had hoped that I would be able to more quickly adjust it to really take advantage of that particular kind of fastener grabbing. But I'm curious of your thoughts. Do you have one of these? Have you used it? Do you uh, like um, like that particular design? You know, over um, some of the other options that are out there. Um, I got both of these, I think, for about 40 bucks on Amazon, 39 and change. So $20 a piece, you know, if you want to look at it that way, versus something like this comes in a little over 30. This is going to go up even more. I don't, I haven't checked that 40, 50, probably 45. Um, so it's, it's in the ballpark. It's USA made. It doesn't have the greatest finish. I can feel a lot of rough spots on it. Um, I don't know if that really matters. In fact, right here I noticed you can see the bubbling and the lacquer that they put over the oxidized surface or oxi uh, black oxide surface. Um, they did take some, some time to have a little fun with it. I appreciate that. They re are really pushing the USA made, or at least they say made in USA, and then it says forged uh, U.S. Steel, 100%, made in USA, support the troops, you know, just made in USA, etc. Um, and it's using the uh, kind of their standard channel lock lifetime warranty. I haven't used that yet. But there it is, the uh, channel lock speed grip pliers. Curious what you think. Share in the comments. Appreciate it. Doc out.